Tuve Fantastique. No. Tuve Fantastique. Que eu dou mais, que eu dou mais. <risos> Chambre mille à cette assente, c'est ça. Cinq cents fans de chaque bouteille. Donnez-moi deux. Yeah. We have a client. That's cute, Wayne. No, I'm serious. Uh, we got a response from the end of times. You're kidding. Nope. It's a lady, uh -huh. very pregnant lady. Her name is Linda Fowler, and she's waiting outside. Come on. Oh, what does she want? I don't know. That's what you're supposed to ask her. Hey, don't you think I know what I'm doing here? I mean, it's not like we've never had an outside client before. We've never had an outside client before. We know this because accounting calls us every Friday and reminds us. What about Billy Harrison? The six-year-old yeah. with a buck and a quarter and a lost dog. Hey, I, I still found the dog. Ooh, I'll call the stockholders. Elaine, just remember, every business starts with the first dollar. Every business. 
Linda Fowler? Yes. Hi. Hi. Oh, I, I hope you're not too busy to see me, Mr. Mr. Wicker. Oh, call me Dennis, okay? Dennis, okay. Here, come on. Can I get you anything? No. Mm, water, milk? Uh, no. Ice cream? <laughs> no. Call accounting, okay? This is my office. Oh. Why don't you sit right here? Okay. There you go. Thank you. You okay? I'm fine. All right. So, what can I do for you? I'd like you to find the bum who got me pregnant. You know, sometimes you meet a person and he's gorgeous and you've just gotten out of a relationship and the next thing you know, the sparks start flying. Yeah, I know what you mean. His name is Rose Sunday. I have this picture of him. We met at Gilbert's. The singles bar. Yeah, the one in the marina. Guess I should have known what I was getting into. Huh? Well. He um, was living in a suite at the Claridge Hotel. Mm -hmm. He travels a lot. He's in the jewelry business. <sighs> anyway, we, we. <sighs> you know, I can't believe I dated this guy. I mean, I feel like such a fool. <sighs> anyway, I really thought there was something going on there, you know? Mm -hmm. And then one day he just checks out of the hotel and never calls me. He's gone. Will you help me? Well, that's what I'm here for. Oh, I am so grateful. Um, how much do you charge? Um. Uh, 300 bucks a day. Plus expenses. Plus expenses, but uh, I don't really eat much, and my car takes regular gas. That sounds yes. fine. Now, I have $500 in cash. Would that be enough for an advance? Oh. Okay. Oh, God, thank you so much. Oh, listen, I, I don't want you to confront him or anything. I mean, if he hears you're looking for him, he'll move again. I just want you to find him so I can see him, okay? You want to see this guy? I make a nice living. I have a nice job. I just want some peace of mind. Okay. Great. I really appreciate your helping me. You're welcome. Take care. Okay. Bye. Bye. So? So, got a client. <gasps> Yay. Yeah, can you ring Raul Santiago's room, please? He's not. I could have sworn he told me he was staying there. Was he there earlier in the week, or does he have reservations? <sighs> yeah, it is important. What do you mean, how important? F 50 bucks? The other hotels only wanted 25. Yeah, how am I supposed to pay you, American Express? No, I left home without it. Yeah, thanks. Bye. It's seven. I'm gonna clock out. Okay. Listen, have a good night, all right? Thanks for staying. Didn't you find out anything? Yeah, detective work is boring. That's it? No, everyone in this world wants to be bribed. Everyone. That shouldn't be surprising. Well, it was different when I was a cop, you know? You either went undercover or you just busted a guy. What are you gonna do? I think I'm gonna give Linda her money back. I'll eat the expenses. I love it. A guilt-ridden private investigator. The guy's a ghost, man. I've been to every singles joint in this city and I've come up with nothing. Nothing. You'll think of something. I know you will. Yeah. Bye. Good night. Kiss you forever, babe. It don't pay my bill. I can't hold you forever, babe. You gotta pay for your bills. I need your money. I need your money. When all is said and done, Jefferson, I wanna
just all. I'd say by the color of the label in 82 or 83. You sell a lot of it? Oh, yeah. We have people in here all the time looking for a $200 bottle of champagne. We don't even stock it. Do you know who distributes it? Yeah, sure. I could order you some. I want to buy a case for a very special friend of mine. Uh -huh. Well, if you could afford a case, you could certainly afford a father's I need your money. Okay, you just got the, the two that stock your vintage champagne, the Wyndham and the Meridian. Great, thanks a lot. Yeah. I need your money. I need your money. Good day. When all is said and done, Jefferson, I want to love. I don't need your hugging, babe. Just to make me feel fine I don't need your loving, babe Satisfy my mind I need your money I need your money All is said and done A Jefferson I want to love I can't kiss you forever, babe It don't pay my bill That's the way it works. I have something you want, information. And you have something I want, cash. Why is it like that? Why can't people just help each other, huh? Now, if I came from the bar and asked you if you knew of a good place to eat, right, you wouldn't expect to be greased. You're right. If I could pinpoint the phenomena, I think I'd have to blame the movies, or perhaps the Chandler Mysteries. They established an expectation, you see, that whenever a private eye asks about something, the guy is asking his bribe to overcome his reluctancy. Hmm. I think you might be right. You can't alter 60 years of cinematic history now, can you? Well, you can't. You're a gentleman and a philosopher. And a traditionalist. Thank you, Mike. Sure. Cool. All right, look. The dude registered under the name Ralph Simpson. He's in 15... Now, was he alone? No, hardly. You didn't have to get the name of the girl, did you? No, I didn't, but uh, she's over there in the bar. That's her in the black and gold. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Just like in the movies. Hmm. Yeah, can I have a Coke or something? Thanks a lot. Poster boy. The kind of scumbags little scumbags hope to be when they grow up. What's his rap? Extortion, smuggling, murder, crimes are us. 
It doesn't explain his reaction when I showed up. If half the city had a grudge against him, he probably figured you were some cowboy looking for a payback. Come on, Redding. He was being more than careful, man. He was prying. I want to help you out. I think you did enough already. And what's that supposed to mean? It means you let a pretty girl get you in one hell of a big mess. But don't sweat it, pal. I've been trying to nail Santiago for years. And you did us a favor. I didn't mean to shoot him, Captain, you know? But he still had half a clip, and, uh, you know, I was worried about the other people. Hey, I know. Redding practically gave me a medal. Look, Dennis, you just got to forget about it. As a Redding said. Yeah, well, he's right. No, he's not right, Captain. You couldn't forget about something like that, and you know I can't either. Captain, uh, is there something you're not telling me? Look, just give it a rest, Dennis. No! Rumor has it there's a hitter in town. Big time operator who works for the Medellin drug cartel. Apparently, there must have been a contract out on Raul Santiago. So I did the hitter's work for him. No, not really. In fact, you probably screwed him up. I, I don't understand, Captain. The way it's supposed to work is this, then. As a girl comes to hire you, if she doesn't know what she's involved in, it's just an easy way to make some extra money. She gets you to ask all the questions necessary to find the hitman's target. That way, there are no witnesses who know what the hitman looks like. Except the girl. When you tell the girl where to find the target, she goes to the hitman to tell him. Only instead of paying her, he kills her. Then he goes and kills his target. And that way, there aren't any witnesses left to know what the hitman looked like. Exactly. Only you never told the girl where Raul was. Instead, you got into a gunfight with him that made the evening news. And she's probably still alive. I mean, if she's seen the news, she's probably hiding from him. You got it. Find her, Captain. You know, or he's gonna kill her. It's a slow night around here, anyway. So you got a plan here, sport? I don't need a plan. I got this. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Here you go. All right, what was her last name again? Are you crazy? I don't know how to break this to you, pal, but we don't have a warrant. We can't go in there without permission. You can't go in there without permission. I'm not in the club anymore, remember? Booker. Is that her? No. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Now, 
does that increase or decrease the chance she'll shoot us? Who are you? I'm a police officer, ma'am, and he's- Nice try. The cops were here about two hours ago. Look, all right, we're sorry about breaking in here, but I'm a private investigator and this is really a cop. I see we're looking for Linda Fowler. Linda said it would be exciting living with her, but this is getting a little ridiculous. You're Linda's roommate? Yeah, since we met in class. Class? Yeah, acting class. Great, acting class. So she's not pregnant, right? No, uh, that's a rig she got from North Shore Costume Rentals. She said it was some kind of practical joke. <laughs> yeah, it's real funny. Do you know where she is? No, she hasn't been here all night. you to come to me, Linda? I don't know his name. He came up to me outside of my acting class. He said that he'd seen me in a play. He gave me a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. I didn't know anything about the man I asked you to find. And when I heard he got killed, I got scared. And now the police are looking for me. I don't know if I've done something wrong. I don't know if I'm responsible for his death. Do you know what the guy looks like? I mean, how are you supposed to contact him again? He's kind of tall. He's He's got blue eyes. <laughs> did the shot come from? I told you it came from across the street. There are a lot of buildings across the street. I know there are a lot of buildings across the street. That's why I can't tell where it came from. <sighs> no, Redding, I'm getting sick and tired of you asking me these questions over and over again. I'm asking questions because I need answers. Hey, Redding, you're the one who wouldn't talk to me, remember? And wait, why are you so interested in me now, huh? When Santiago was taken down, you wouldn't even give me the time of day. Do you remember that? We think the man who killed Santiago has a second target in town. Yeah, and he killed her. No, he killed Linda Fowler because she saw him. We think he's got another job. According to the DEA's informants, there was an open contract out on Santiago, and it called for two hits. Then it was a second hit. We don't know yet. You don't know. I swear. Well, somebody better find out, Redding. How? How the hell are you going to find this guy? He found me, Captain. It works both ways. Listen, was Redding being straight with me when he said he had no leads on the hitman's second target? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been working on this thing nonstop. Nobody's come up with anything. And as far as we know, there hasn't been another hit since Santiago, right? So? So, Captain, that means the target is still alive. Yeah, well, maybe the hitter's having a hard time finding him. Or maybe he's using someone to find the target like he used me and Linda Fowler, Captain. Look, Booker, that still means you're looking for people that you know nothing about. Yeah. But we got resources.
We gotta find who's stalking the next victim. We gotta find him now. How? I'm hoping it's someone like me, you know, probably a PI, probably very young. Maybe put an ad in the newspaper like we did. It's a place to start. Look, I want you to run credit histories, financial records, anything you can get your hands on, okay? Then we'll make a list, then we'll start making phone Look, calls. Look, do you know how long that's gonna take? Yeah, I know how long it's gonna take, Elaine, but it's all we've got to go on. Okay, thanks, but please call us if you do. Okay. Hello, is this Combs Investigation Services? Is this a Mr. Randall Combs? Hi, this is Dennis Booker's office at Tsushima. Did you happen to see the news about the shootout at the hotel? Well, we're calling other PIs around town to see if maybe they're involved in a similar case and don't realize it. This woman hiring me, what would she be like? She said she was involved in a fraternity suit. In our case, she gave us a Polaroid photo of the target, a man named Raul Santiago. Well, it doesn't really ring any bells for me, but if something like that should happen, I will be sure to give you a call right away. Goodbye. <sighs> Sorry to keep you waiting. I got your call. You, you found them? Oh, the uh, witnesses who saw your car accident. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Finding them was easy as pie. But I just got a very interesting phone call that might just explain why you really hired me. So let's discuss who really hired you. You know, if Redding knew we were working behind his back, he'd kill us. Bad choice of words, Captain. You know, we got Raul Santiago's whole life here. We still don't even know who his next target is. Booker, you know, I didn't want to mention this, but what makes you think the two targets are related? That's all I got to go on, Captain. We'll find him. We really have to talk. You have a wrong number. No, no, no. Paula gave it to me. That was pretty stupid, giving her your number. See, that can be traced back to an address. But you had to get in touch with me somehow. So how did you guess? I got a call from the office of your first fall guy, Dennis Booker. Boy, would he like to have a word with you. But I have this funny feeling that you're going to be talking to me instead, don't you? Do you have the addresses of the name she gave you? Right here in front of me. Why don't you make sure that the front door is locked? See, now that we know what risks are involved, it's going to cost you quite a bit more money. For her and for me. I can't believe you mean that. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's that or I'm going to have to play the good citizen and take this list of people that you've been looking for to the police and give them the number where they can find you. I doubt you're going to be able to do that. Really? It's like trying to catch a bird by pouring salt down his tail. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Maybe something like this. <sighs> Aren't these new cellular phones just amazing? No, no. Think about no! it. No! 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 So, what a lovely name.
Hello? Elaine Grazzo. Middle name Bartolo. Driver's license number 29031480. Who is this? Someone who knows a lot about you. Why are you telling me this? Because from what I hear, you and your boss have been trying to find out way too much about me. And it's already caused me all too much trouble. So I want you to give a message to Booker. I want you to tell him to stop trying to find me for 12 hours. Or I'll be paying visits to all his friends. Things were flying all over the place. I didn't know what was going on. The phone rings, I pick it up, and the guy starts talking. He knows everything about me, which really freaked me out. And he says, uh, keep Booker off the case. All right, all right, is that all he said? Yeah. Look, Elaine, I know this is a dumb question, but did you recognize anything about his voice? You mean like maybe I once met him? No, I gave up dating international terrorists months ago. Yeah, this is a dead end. I mean, 12 hours, may as well go home now, wait for film at 11. I think you gave away the store, Captain. You got an idea? The only way you could put a tail on us was to investigate us the same way I investigated Raul. Now we got names of targets, Captain, our names. Now we gotta start working backwards. Call Alicia and find out if anyone ran our names for any other credit companies, okay? Okay. Dennis, where are you going? I'm gonna see if anyone's been poking around the neighborhood. Good, I'll come with you. No, Captain, please stay out of this. Look, Dennis, you can't take down a guy like this one-on-one. -on -one. Captain, they know where she lives and works, okay? Just take her back to the chapel and stay with her until this is over, please. Look, Sam, I need to know if someone ran a skip trace through your credit reporting service. N no, no, it's the head of my investigation unit, Dennis Booker. I just want to know if anyone is asking about Elaine Grazzo. Yeah, somebody was. Who? Investigated. Said she owed a lot of money on a loan. Well, did you leave a card or a phone number where you could be reached or anything like nah. that? Yeah. Now, I wouldn't tell him anything. I didn't like his manner. He even tried to bribe me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Booker, I've got a name for you. Yeah, who? He's a private investigator named Randall Combs, 5952 Washington Avenue. He ran a phony skip trace on you and Elaine through Intertel Credit. Thanks, Alicia. Wait, Dennis, there's something else. Yeah? He ran another name, Adam Fuller. And Dennis, he also ran my name. Listen, Alicia, stay in the building, okay? And uh, get some security up there with you. Do me a favor, Dennis. Give me some advice I haven't thought of. It's gonna end very soon.
Yeah, get me Jump Street. And Captain Phil will tell him it's Booker and I need him fast. Captain, he killed the PI and shredded the files, but he didn't realize one thing. Intertel sent an extra copy, Captain. I got the name of the target. I got him, man. I got the son of a bitch. Martina Santiago? Listen, listen. Why does a Medellin cartel want you dead? My ex-husband competes with them, but he abandoned me. Raul Santiago, right? Yes, but I haven't seen him in years. Well, I don't think that matters to them, Martina. Listen to me, they still want his whole family dead. I want you to go to the police, all right? Come on, come on, it's okay. Come on. Listen, I want you to go to the police and talk to Captain Fuller, okay? Get out! <laughs> listen, listen. Go out the back and don't stop for anything, okay? Isn't this interesting? Where's Martina Santiago? Gone to the police. And who are you? Oh, I think you know. Dennis Booker. And you're here alone? No. You're here too. Why not the police? You would have seen them coming a mile away. And even if you hadn't, who knows? You might have surrendered. Then why didn't you shoot me when I came through the door? Well, as much as I wanted to, I'm not like you. I can't just shoot you down. Even you, I'm willing to give one chance to surrender. You're crazy. That's what they tell me. <laughs> <laughs> 